Tariq Radio page. I hope you guys have done that, ladies and gentlemen. Follow me on my Tariq Radio page. Other than that, how's everybody doing? I hope you guys are having a great week, and I hope you guys are going to have a great weekend coming up. So the topic we're discussing today, ladies and gentlemen, and we're waiting on everybody to come on pile in the room. The topic we're discussing is how to stop people from sabotaging foundational black Americans. This is kind of an extension of the broadcast I did yesterday on my Tariq radio channel on YouTube. Again, y'all need to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're talking about a story in Tennessee where um, a suspected white supremacist comptroller, who's a state comptroller out there in Tennessee named Jason Mumpower, this guy, suspected white supremacist, not saying that he is a white supremacist, but many people suspect that he is. Many people suspect that he may be one. So this is just a suspicion. So this guy out there in Tennessee, there's a black town, Mason, Tennessee, very small town. This town has been incorporated for 153 years. All of a sudden, the Ford factory is going to come out there and bring billions of dollars worth of development right out there near this small town, which is majority black. And a lot of black politicians are kind of running the show over there. So all of a sudden they want to come in. This suspected white supremacist comptroller wants to come in and dissolve the city charter. They want the city to blend in with the rest of the white run and control county as a way to undermine them because there's about to be a, a big economic windfall coming in for that town. So whenever black folks are about to get some type of economic prosperity, the white supremacist suspects come in and they undermine it. This is an old Jim Crow tactic. So we, as a good foundation of black American family, we have to discuss ways that we can be codified so we can thwart this type of thing. We need to use these opportunities as think tank moments. And I want to chop it up with the family and get some ideas. When we have situations where we have suspected white supremacist politicians coming into the mix, trying to overtly sabotage black progress, what do we need to do as a collective nation? Because we as foundational black Americans, we are a nation of people. We have to start thinking and moving and acting as a nation and doing things in a collective manner. When we do things in a collective manner, <clears throat> we can get things done. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of my suggestions, if we're going to go on the, the paper route, meaning the political route, some ideas I have, he's a comptroller. I don't know what the laws are out there in Tennessee. I need some Tennessee people to help me. This guy, Jason Mumpower, can this guy be recalled? I want to know about the position he has. People need to start looking for ways to get these folks up out of office immediately. When they do stuff like this, all hands have to be on deck. We have to put these people on the summer jam screen. Their name has to be synonymous with their racist deeds. They can't hide behind their positions doing these little Jim Crow positions. We need to see if this man can be recalled. We did the same thing. We did something similar out there in Ferguson. When those suspected white supremacist politicians were doing all of that janky stuff during the Mike Brown situation, we were out there. We got people organized. We were getting those politicians up out of office left and right out there. We made sure to get them up out the paint. If they're going to sit up here and co-sign uh, an anti-black white supremacist narrative, then all of us, you're going to have to just be up out of these positions. And this is another thing. A lot of us on the grassroots, we were out there putting in some real work. And this is when we started to see a lot of the rise of the Democratic shields. That's another thing we saw. We saw the, the, the Democrats sending a lot of their shields, the DeRay McKessons and all of these people out there to, again, sabotage us on another side of the game. So we had to counter that too. We have to learn how to counter all of these saboteur groups out here. There's always somebody coming in the mix trying to sabotage foundational black Americans. So we need to discuss ways that we can move our numbers in a power position because we can't 
come at these folks morally. We know what they're doing is immoral and the dominant society knows what they're doing is immoral. How can we get on code, make political moves, social moves, economic moves, or whatever move we need to make as a collective to punish these folks and get them up out the pain? That's how we need to be thinking and we have to not be scared to do so. Let's stop being scared about getting these people the hell up out of office. We got to stop being afraid to do that. A lot of times when it comes to getting these political people who do us dirty, when it comes to us making real strong power moves to get them out the paint, let's be real. A lot of black folks get scared. Let's be real. A lot of black folks are actually scared of power because we think, or a lot of black people think, if we make power moves, oh, the white folks going to be mad. They're going to get us. Oh, Lord, don't get these white people round up now. Oh, Lord, you're going to get us all in good trouble. The eyes get the bucket, okay? We got to get off the eyes bucket nonsense, and, and let's get some stuff done. If we Do we have any Tennessee people in the room? Any people in Tennessee? Raise your hand. If you are in Tennessee, raise your hand, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in Tennessee, raise your hand. Let me see my Tennessee people in here. I'm looking in the room now. All my Tennessee people, raise your hand if you are in here. Because I want to know what the get down is out there in Tennessee. And we're going to get some, I'm going to bring some calls in in a second. But my Tennessee folks, we got to be on top of this stuff. A lot of things that happen like this, we have to be on top of it. And as far as that um, Jason or Justin Mumpower, Mum whatever his name is, I put up a post earlier showing that he has an adopted black son. That dude, the suspected white supremacist politician who's trying to undermine this black town, there's pictures of him. They got an adopted black son that they like parading around. Have y'all noticed a lot of these suspected white supremacists who do all of this little slick stuff to black folks collectively? A lot of them will always have some adopted black kids somewhere, and they use those adopted black kids as cover. They use them to say, hey, I can't be racist. Look, I adopted a little Negro. So I, there's no way I'm racist. Um, LePage up there, at, is that New Hampshire? Is that Paul LePage? Who was up here talking about, I think it was New Hampshire, if I'm not mistaken, the, the suspected white supremacist governor up there. I think he's the governor. Paul LePage, I think that's his name. Remember him? He has an, uh, an adopted black son. And that's the, the, the suspected white supremacist up there talking about all the drugs up there in New Hampshire was brought up there by black drug dealers from New York. Because ain't no, there's only three Negroes in New Hampshire. But he was up there talking about all the drugs are up there because the lefty and D-money and black drug dealers from New York bringing the dope up there. Yeah. So we got to watch the game out here, guys. We got to watch what these people are doing. We got to watch what these people are doing and, be in, and we got to be on top of it. Let's get um Harriet Tubman's pistol in here. What's up, Harriet Tubman's pistol? Turn your microphone on. Turn. Hey, hey, what's up? What's, what's up, brother? Up? How you doing, family? Hey, I'm out, I'm out here. I'm out here going hard for my people at all costs. No doubt. No doubt. What city are you in, brother? I'm in I'm in Woodstock, Georgia. Oh, there you go. There you go. My man. Baby. But you you already know what I'm on. I'm on I'm on um I'm on Mason, Tennessee right now. And what uh what what James Mom power is trying to do to our people there. These are these are what I call these are uh, the color of law tactics. Yeah. These are these are domestic economic hitman strategies. Being, yes. Being placed on our people in modern day America. And thank God we got technology where we can get ahead of the curve. See, our ancestors couldn't get it ahead of the curve like we can now, but we can and we got to use that yeah. to our advantage. Yes, indeed. Also, oh, go ahead, brother. This is your platform. Go ahead, brother. Finish, finish your thought. Finish your thought, brother. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. Um, Ebony and MS, M, NBC. I'm also covering on uh, covering this, but they covered in the wrong way. So I just want all my people to know what's going on out here, and to continue to stay uh, ahead of the curve, so we can control our own ne our own negative. Now, how did they? How did they? How did they promote? How did they cover this? 
talking about it's a uh, it's a majority democratic state and all of these extras that ain't got nothing to do with what's really going on there and how it's affecting our people. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. But well, thank you for the call, Just, brother. Yeah, that's another thing. See, we we basically forced the the white mainstream media to cover this story, and I I, I haven't watched television today or yesterday, so I don't know how they're covering it. But we've kind of forced them to kind of they they have to report on it now because it's a thing. So they will spin it because, again, there's no white right or white left. They're two feathers on the same bird, man. The Democratic white supremacists are just as worse as the right wing white supremacists when it comes to undermining us. Like I told people on my broadcast last night, the Democrats Let's be very clear, because they'll try to make this into a Democrat-Republican thing. And the Democrats, sometimes they don't mind pointing out the racism of a, of a Republican. You know, that's their whole thing. The only time they'll talk about racism if it's a, if it's a Republican. But the Democrats do the same thing. They're just more covert with their racism. Like I said, they would do the exact same thing that Mumpower is doing. See, Mumpower, he's, he's doing blatant white supremacist tactics, which is bad. For business, it's bad for the white supremacists because we can see it. This is why so many of us are on code about it. And the Democrats are like, no, 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 you can't do it like that. You got to be more refined with the racism. What you got to do, you got to bring in a Lori Lightfoot type. What we'll do, we'll bring in a Lori Lightfoot. We'll bring in somebody whose priority is their sexuality. We'll bring some LGBT black person in there. Then we'll make them the mayor or the city council person. Once we get them in there, then they'll designate little LGBT sanctuary areas. It'll be a sanctuary city for LGBT, and then it'll, it'll be a sanctuary city for immigrants, and then they'll say the minority coalition, so that means all of the non-black people will come down. They will put them in positions of authority there, and then they will be the ones that will zone everything out of our existence so that we won't get it. Then you'll see a bunch of homeless black people laying around here like, hey, what happened? And the politicians are looking at us like, hey, you guys elected us. I mean, hey, this is what you wanted, right? See, that's how the Democrats will do it. This is what they do out here in L.A., by the way. They bring in all of these immigrant groups, LGBT groups, and all the black people are out here homeless holding the bag. So they would do the same thing. Don't let them fool you with that right wing, left wing nonsense. I prefer blatant white supremacy because we can deal with it better. So now there's no confusion about what's going on which is bad for their business see this isn't a good look for them so this is why we got to be on top of this thing when they pull little moves like this see when we think about systematic white supremacy we think of some skinhead we think of somebody with a, a swastika on no 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 it's these people in these positions wearing these suits sitting up here calmly and covertly using certain laws and i'm white and i say so tactics to undermine whole groups of black people. Don't you think white supremacy is about some damn mouth frothing Aryan Nazi? That's not what it is. They, that, they are nothing burgers, man. That is nothing to worry about. I do not worry about um, the proud boy types unless they're connected with, the, with law enforcement. That's the only time I get worried about them is if they got all of these connections with law enforcement. But we have to understand the white supremacists are the people that sitting up there in office making these little moves where they try to undermine black people in certain areas. And this is why we can't get any real economic footholds anywhere. We got to be on top of our game and we got to stop being scared. Let me get some more people in here. Y'all raise your hand if you want to get on. Let's chop it up. Let's get um, Nassimi. I think that's your name. Nassimi, hop on. Nassimi, I see a Moorish flag there. Nasimi, hop on, Nasimi. Hello? Hello, Nasimi. All right, Nasimi, turn your microphone on. All right. Nasimi, turn your microphone on. Hello? Yo, sub Tarek. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you, sir. How are you? I'm good, Tarek. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. So you're from Morocco, right? Uh, yeah, I'm North African. Okay, are you? Are, where are you now? Are you in Morocco or are you here in the States? Uh, I'm right now in Morocco. 
Oh, you're in Morocco? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So what's on your mind, sir? Uh, I have a question. Like, uh, I've seen... Uh, you mentioned this uh, FBA thing, FBA thing. Like, does this FBA mean, like... Uh, because I've got, like, uh, two different uh, definitions on it. And then once I ask, I ask someone about it and they got offended. So I would appreciate, like, if you could uh, explain it, if that's okay oh. with you. Yeah, I mean, is it, it, it shouldn't really be that hard to explain. It's almost self-explanatory when you say the words. It's almost self-explanatory. Now, what do you think FBA is? Because many people have, are, have explained what it is, and it's not some type of trick terminology. So what exactly are you confused about what a foundational black American is? Uh, from what I understood is that uh, FBA means that someone is uh, originally, like, uh, is a Native American. Uh, they're, they're a foundational Black American. See, when you say Native American, you think, people think of the mongoloid-looking red Native Americans, which is the, the, the media image of what a Native American is supposed to be. Foundational Black American, that's a person in America who descended from slavery, who built the United States, who are non-immigrants. That's what a foundational Black American is. Like, for example, I'm a non-immigrant. Nobody in my family immigrated here. Um, my family built the United States from scratch. There was no United States until my family built it. That makes me a foundational Black American. That makes sense? Uh, all right. So what you mean by foundational? That uh, you are connected to the slavery? Yes. Absolutely. But my my family is like, yes. how, how, like, how do you know like you are connected to the slavery? How do I know? Yeah, like, like, how would you know? Like, from, from what I learned is that... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but... Uh, yeah, well, that's, that, that's just my question. Like, how would you know that you are a foundational black uh, African-American? Because it is very well documented, and I can trace my family to plantations in this country. It's, that's a very strange question. Why wouldn't I know? Uh, all right, uh, all right. Uh, another question I, I want to ask you about: is, Do you guys really think that uh, the Moors were black? Do we think the Moors were black? Were well, Europeans? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, they were black. That's what the word Moor means, as a matter of fact. Why? Uh, do you really like? Do you really think uh, you guys are the actual Moors? The actual Moors who uh, who went to who conquered. Not Spain, just a small proportion of Spain. Um, well, the because more the, the, because Mori, because actually Mori, like uh, Mo, uh, the name Mori, like comes from Mauritania, like Mor Mauritania, like this is how it is uh, explained. Like people from, and it is uh, mainly refers to Morocco. Like back at the time, it was this is what it was called. And, um, and I don't, I don't exactly uh, believe what you guys think that the Moors were actually black. So why did they, the Europeans, in their own contemporary writings, keep describing them as black? And not only did they call them black, they talked about how black they were. Why did the European writers do that? Uh, I haven't seen any of the European how they look describe up, it. Look up the song of Roland. Look up the song. I have seen. Giving... Oh, do, you know, do you know who's Imusino? Slow down. Imusino? Do you know slow, down. Imusino? slow down. Ah, I Look am up. slow down. I'm slow down. Okay. Ah, it's, okay. it's a I'm lot of pressure to talk in front okay. of these people. Slow down. Slow down. There's a, a book called The Song of Roland, written in the 6th century. The first-hand account of what the people saw when the Moors came into Spain. I mean, came into the Iberian Peninsula. There was a battle up there. Um, I want to say... Uh, by f the southern France, I want to say. But again, they wrote something called the Song of Roland, which described what the Moors looked like. They talked about how black they were. Okay? All right, all right, all right. But so, here's so, my, so question. my question, okay, so my question to let you. Me, please, let me ask a question. You're going to have to let me finish. Okay, you okay. can't cut me off. I'm, we're talking, you wanted, some, you wanted answers? I'm giving you some historic information here. My question to you, European writers, the 6th century, talked about how black the Moors were when they got there. They said they were black as pitch, black as a crow, black as night. 
they just went on and on about how black they were. Are you saying those European contemporary writers were lying about what they said? As I said, like I don't, I didn't see any of the Moors were uh, any f- European describe the Moors. All I like, all it is an unknown fact. Like, let, let me ask a question. Okay, let's what try again, you? sir. Let's okay, because now you're stuttering and stammering. Okay, let's slow it down. You're stuttering and stammering. Okay, let's not do that. All right, let's slow down. So, you're going to deflect from what I just asked you. Is that what you're doing, sir? You can turn your microphone on. Uh, huh? No, I'm not stuttering or anything. Just English is not my first language. Uh, that's it. Like, I just, can I ask my question now, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. What was the name of the dynasty that actually conquered that small part of Spain? Like, what was the name of the dynasty? Go, ask me, go ahead. Ask me that again, sir. I'm sorry. I said, what was the name of the dynasty that went to Spain? Because, like, what is a known fact, there were plenty of dynasties that took over Morocco, like, until now. Like, the okay. current dynasty is called the Alawite dynasty. Like, my question yeah. is, like, okay. what dynasty okay. Like, okay. The, conquered okay. This, Spain? This, okay, these are kind of distinctions without a difference. The Moors, when they arrived, just scholar after scholar, contemporary after contemporary, just kept saying how black they were. The initial army that came up into Spain with General Tariq, they came from Senegal. There were a handful of Arabs that went up there too, but the military arm and many of the rulers were black African men. And this is very well documented. In fact, many pictures and paintings. Every time you see a picture and painting of a Moor, usually they're very black, especially in museums. Why is that? Turn your microphone on, sir. You still haven't answered. You still haven't answered my question. Sorry. Okay, okay, uh, okay. you're okay. talking. Okay, you... let's, let's let's keep it very simple. Okay, because what you're talking about these different dynasties these are these are non sequiturs. You just said that the Moors weren't black, and I'm telling you very simply, the images of the Moors were very, very black people. You go to museums, you see certain images of Moors, and they're very black. My question to you is, why is that if they weren't black? Why did they portray them as black? Turn your microphone on. As I said, like, there are pictures. Like, I can, I, like, everyone, everyone I believe can do that. Like, and first of, and first of all, like, Morocco, like, was, was actually founded by the Umayyads and the dinosaurs okay. asked me about okay you're that... babbling sir i just I'm asked not you again. you're not letting me talk bro. because you're i'm not because <laughs> when i ask you a simple question i want a simple answer i just answer I where were you a okay, okay okay where, where were why where do were they have to slow down again where were these pictures at museums, they got what some museums at Getty, in what country? Uh, the Getty Center. They got one at the Getty Center. They have a picture of more. Where is this Getty Center? I don't know. Where right out Center. out here in California, where I live. <laughs> so what's funny about that? Uh, is the Getty Center a joke? Is that what you're saying? What are you laughing? Yeah, because uh, no, no, because that's not how is that proves anything. Like uh, so uh, a someone picture, uh, uh, wait, because uh, uh, someone uh, who can a picture in a museum in a very well-respected museum don't mean anything? Is that what you're saying, sir? Yeah. Have a good day. Have a, have a good day. Thank you. All right. All right. There you go. All right. Because now if museums are not to be taken seriously, okay, I'm, not, I'm supposed to take you seriously and not a damn museum where there's pictures of Moors, black as hell, Okay, yeah, just just tap out. That's just a tap out. When people start doing that, when they just engage in bad faith arguments like that, just tap out. Then then it becomes trolling. There you go. That just becomes a bunch of trolling. I'm up here talking about documents, and he's up here trying to notice how they try to change the subject with the Umayyad dynasty. What about them? They went up. Eh, okay, that's. That's a non sequitur. We're talking about what the people look like, and I'm telling you what the descriptions were. But you have to understand the different dynasties that came over in Morocco. Okay, uh, okay. All right. That means you have no argument. All right. The Moors were black. Period. 
that ain't even anything that's up for discussion. Black folks, don't even let people waste your time. If they come around you telling you the Moors weren't black, these are people who are sitting around trying to waste your time. The Moors were black as hell. The word Moor means black. Moor was a descriptive term. Okay? And they like to play this game because they don't want to own up to the fact that it was these black men up there running the show for 800 years in Southern Europe. That's what this is really about. They have to do all of these logistical tricks and flips in order to deny the fact that it was black men, jet black men, who went up there into Europe and taught people civilization. It was black men who went up in there and elevated the society in Europe. They went there and brought in mathematics, language, everything under the sun, foods, science, technology, architecture. It was black men who did that, and they were the Moors, and they know this. This is not a secret. These people know this. They just hope that we don't know it, and they hope they can come around our circles and talk dumb, and that they talk dumb long enough and talk in circles We'll get off track. I'm not off track. I didn't been all over Europe. I didn't seen this stuff. I didn't been all over Spain. You're not going to tell me nothing. I didn't been in Spain. I didn't seen the architecture. I didn't been to these museums all in Spain and Italy and all over the place. I have read these documents. I have books that that prove that these were black people. This is not anything up for debate. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get some more people in here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, goodness. All right, raise your hand, folks. Who is this goddess, goddess native to America? Let's get her in here. All right, goddess native to America, hop in. Goddess? Goddess native to America. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yes, ma'am. What is on your mind? I ma'am? wanted to know what was the whole, like the whole point of everybody just arguing and trying to discuss who's this, where they from, and how, what kind of ethnicity they are, and all this that and the third. It's kind of funny, but I just wanted to know the point of just the distinguishing all these races and backgrounds and stuff like that. Is this leading to a point where we could all come as one world and under one rule? and give everybody fairness and equality and like, you know what I mean? I'm hoping that a lot of people are looking towards that. Well, the thing is we foundational black Americans, we've been on that. We were the only ones on this whole pan Africanism thing. We've been running around here. We are the only people we were running around here talking about pan Africanism for the last 100 years. How has that worked? And that is the question, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, I get it. I I feel for, you know, the whole fucked up type of way people try to, like, push everybody down as far as black, Spanish, whatever, whatever race they are. But I'm just saying, is everybody's goal to have peace and equality, like, and fairness? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Look, our goal... As foundational black Americans, our goal is to have empowerment so that we can protect ourselves and protect our people and have tangibles for us. We done sat up here and played the equality, fairness right. game, and ain't nobody being fair with us. We done right. sat here and played that game. I want foundational black Americans to have some damn power. I right. want us to make power moves. I want us to have tangibles. I want us to be protected. I don't want us to be exploited by all of these damn groups coming over here seeing how friendly we are and how much we want to be on some kumbaya all they've done is exploit that and i'm tired of it so that's why it is smart for us to say hey you know what we are our own ethnic nation as foundational black americans with respect to everybody else we acknowledge our nationhood as foundational black americans and that doesn't mean we're trying to denigrate anybody else but When it comes to our cultural significance, we have a certain culture that is unique and we are going to acknowledge our culture because we've done so much to give our culture away. Absolutely. That's a big mistake that we've done as foundational black Americans. We sat up here and attribute our culture to all of these other people. And then they'll turn around and act like we are the ones who don't have a culture. 
So we're just getting the house in order right now, as we should have been doing a long time ago. So we're getting some, making everybody get a little act right right about now. And once everybody gets some act right, then we can do the kumbaya thing. Yes, God bless. God bless. I, I I like how you talk and are very respectful. And you know, I'm just trying to educate myself and learn no, and understand. Absolutely. Thank you so much, beloved. Man, yeah, man. Listen. Yeah, we done the kumbaya thing. All right. And none of this is about no disrespect of anybody. We don't have time to disrespect anybody. But foundational Black Americans, we're getting codified about our culture. Okay, we're getting codified about our culture. So there is no confusion. Because now we got a lot of five dollar FBAs trying to pop up now. We've, we've, we've had so much disrespect going on. We, we just have to stop that. The disrespect is going to have to stop. And my thing is foundational black Americans, we are the main ones fighting against the real enemy, which is systematic white supremacy. And we sit up here and we fight the battles for every damn body. Other groups ain't really going after white supremacy, man. Let's just keep it a buck. We've been the only ones out here fighting. That's why everybody comes over here to, to stand behind us while we do all the fighting and then they reap whatever little benefits that come our way. We got to be the first in line to fight and whatever benefits come our way, they're the first in line for the damn benefits. Hey, 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 we all in this together now. Come on now. Let me get some of that. Let me get some of that DACA program, brother. Let me get some of those minority coalitions, brother. Let me get some of that affirmative action, brother. We all the same now. You see, they've been playing that game. Now, when we're talking about reparations, they're trying to wiggle themselves into the reparations conversation. Now, this is where we're drawing the line. This is why we really had to get on code. Because now we're talking about reparations. You got people trying to crowbar themselves into the damn reparations conversation well you know the caribbean that is part of america technically it's part of the americas that means you know we the one boat drop you off drop me off too uh, shut up you're not atlanta you're not atlanta you ain't atlanta like that little girl said in that song you not atlanta we ain't playing that game we drawing the line right there we should have been doing this a long time ago. It's all respect. Let's see who we got here. Let's get Pink Van Zant. All right. This man has pink vans on in his profile picture. Pink Van Zant, turn your microphone on, sir. All right, Pink. You can turn your microphone on if you wish to speak. Oh, what's up? What's up, Pink? How are you? How'd you feel about that conversation you had with that Arab guy? How'd I feel about it? Yeah. Well, after he was trying to be a little deceptive, and I just knew better. So, how do you feel about it? What do you thought about what he's? What do you think about what he said? I don't know. I feel like he used a lot of like conversational techniques to like discard what he was saying. Like I, I discarded what he was saying. Well, yeah. You, I mean, I came in pretty late to the conversation. But uh, I had a better question for you. I thought on Twitter today, it kind of made a bunch of sense. If most black people got a life insurance policy, like of a like semi decent amount, uh, black deaths could be cut down pretty heavily because the insurance companies would step in. Right. How do you feel about that? Right. I, I agree. I've said this many times. I even said this in my book. I, I got my book, Foundational Black American Race Bearer, and I talked about how many black people got insurance policies. The insurance companies would step in, just like in slavery. In slavery, a lot of black people were technically not killed by outsiders because it would cost too much. So, yeah, there is something to that. Cool. Uh, my other question, if it's cool if I ask, uh, why? I don't find it's It's strange to me the importance on the fact that the Moors like influenced all of like European society or upper Europe society. Um, it's that strange to me why the, the importance on that, like just, I don't understand why you would need to find it important that that happened. Um, based on the contradiction that why didn't they focus on the African continent? Um, they did at the time. You have to understand 
Africa was thriving during the time of the Moors. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, the 13th, uh, in the 1300s, you have the richest man in recorded history, Mansa Musa, over there in West Africa. And he did a very famous pilgrimage when he went over to Mecca. He gave away so much gold, it depressed the economy in many Eastern um, countries over there. So the money was major over there. They had great universities. Um, the University of Timbuktu, which is a, a place a lot of people went to learn. So Africa was thriving at that time. So, right. so they did do great things over there. And this is going to sound, well, this is the fucked up thing to ask. So did the Africans... Oh, hold on, hold on, wait, one second, one second, one second. Your phone. Can you do something with your phone, sir? Are you on a Bluetooth? Account? No, no, this phone just sucks. There you go. Much okay, much better. <laughs> cool. Better. Um, yeah. So, would you say that Africans at that time fucked up Africans for a long time? Did they mess up Africans? Well, I mean, so he gave so much gold to the guy, like, he kind of fucked up the prosperity of his own people at that time, right? Well, what I... I think Mansa Musa kind of messed up by going around showing all of that wealth, because what happened after that, that put a target on Africa's back. When people saw Mansa Musa with all of that gold, the word got out in Europe, and, and there's maps of Mansa Musa, there's maps from Europe with Mansa Musa on it holding gold. That put a bullseye on West Africa, and everybody from the Middle East, from Europe, made a beeline over there. They started getting their weight up to go over to exploit Africa a century or so. Is that the later. same thing so, that's happening with, like, um, I mean, a lot of like higher, more wealthy Africans, like, no, Africans, black people now in America. Like, is there a similar thing happening? Not really, no, because black people, we don't really have any power over here because we're still subjugated. You don't think you have a cultural power? Supremacy, right? You don't think that there is, like, a, Look, a large, like, definitely with youth or people who uh, absorb, like, the pop culture, there is a larger, like, black power that, that is existing now. The thought, the thought culture? What do you mean, the thought Not culture? Not thought culture. No, I mean, just... So, your general pop... Oh, pop culture. I was saying pop culture. Okay, something you said pop culture. Okay. Well, culture. I mean, that too sometimes, um, but that yeah. disregarded. No, no, the white <laughs> they, they, they're the pop culture. They're, they're the king. <laughs> but um, cultural power, you know, if we're subjugated, you know, do we really have power? Do you, like, Would you have cultural power in a prison? Uh, the Jews you know, did a good job with this. Well, a lot of the Jewish people can pass for white. You understand? And that's the power that they have. They can still pass for yeah, white. But they did they the, I'm saying they did this in like in a, a white supremacy culture. Like, are they... Yeah. What's the way for it? But all they have, any of them can pass for white, though. In fact, do you know that... But whiteness um, only started existing, like, since the Irish and certain like people started showing up America. <laughs> Doesn't matter when it is it started. It's here now, and it's the dominating power force that's here right now, and it dominates and controls and mistreats us all who are non-white, and that's a problem. So we're not we don't have any power under that. We have to figure out how to replace that system of white supremacy in order to get justice. Then we can have real power. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a, a very strange relationship with thinking that justice actually exists because I think it just depends on who's in control. It doesn't matter which power exists. They'll enact their own justice. So that's different. Who, who do you I, think okay, actually I, I, like I, I, what I, I, power I, I, controls I, things now? Like other than like I know white supremacy, but that's such a vague term. No, it, it's not vague. It's not vague at all. Okay, so how would you define it? White supremacy is any group or any person or group who with thought, speech, or action controls or dominates non-white people on the planet. That's all the white supremacy is. So That's how do you account is. for like uh, other spheres of influence like China or I, mean, I guess Russia is like technically white, but even they have their own problems yeah. where they're varying degrees of white and they fight over that shit. Just because it's degrees of whiteness doesn't mean it's any less white. White supremacy yeah, yeah, fight among each other. That's the China thing. Are we just saying it's like more colorism that they're dealing with? Because I mean, I think they're an entirely China different a, threat. China is allowed, and you know, China fucking people. hates black people. Uh, and we know that. We they know that. Really they got it. From white, <laughs> they probably do think they, they got it from the, They got it from the white supremacists, sir. And China, 
sir, they are allowed to do what they do. They are allowed to thrive by the white supremacists. They can, the white supremacists can get rid of China at the drop of a hat. They got warships over there off the coast of China right now. They can get rid of China anytime they want to. There was, a, there was an old saying not too long ago, you don't have a Chinaman's chance in hell. So they allow China to do what they do, sir. But they can get rid of them anytime. Any place over there in Asia, they can get rid of it at the drop of a hat. Turn your microphone on, sir. Yeah, hello. Turn your microphone on. I don't know why that happened. Um, hey. With that type of worldview, like, is your worldview only based on what's happening kind of currently or the past, like, let's say 20 years or so? Like, are you not looking at the things that are, like, China has always been a racist country. It doesn't matter. I don't live in China. I, I have to deal with the white supremacists here. Uh -huh. So what does China have to do with me? Or, or black people. We're not going to China. Well, because China, the world economic power is actually the one controlling most things. I mean... Which is white supremacy, sir. Which is white supremacy. That's fair. I mean, I'm not... I disagree with that, but I, your view is, like, valid because you think it and you have, like, a, a way of spacing it out. Oh, okay. If you disagree, what's more powerful than systematic white supremacy? A gun. And who controls the guns? Depends on which place you're talking about. Name the black manufacturer of guns. I mean, that's a good problem to talk about. Why aren't there more of those? Uh, um, because the white supremacists don't allow it. That's why. Well, they don't allow much gun manufacturer in general. Uh, and the fact that they get to allow or disallow proves white supremacy, right? No, it just allows the fact that the government fucking sucks and doesn't want people to have guns. Um, where they let white people have guns. No, they allow certain companies to manufacture guns, and they cut off supplies right. of ammunition from certain areas white. just so they have more power. Yeah, they let white companies make these guns, sir. I'm not it's sure about that. I'm not, I think that that's a across-the-board measure to keep people, like, down. No, 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 no. That's not true. What do you think they of people like uh, Torre? Sir, all around the country, they got gun laws that are so relaxed, especially down in Florida. They have gun laws designed for white people. These gun laws are designed for white people. The common law is to allow these gun laws to let white people run around with guns willy nilly. The common law is for black people to be punished for gun crimes, not white people. I mean, that's where a lot of gun reform came from. Like, the Second Amendment was a lot more prosperous until. Uh, well, we freed the slaves and whatnot. Certain areas would, you know, they're like, well, holy shit, we can't have black people having guns. But so you have restrictions. To, but, came but, but we have to understand the common law. See, white supremacists, they run off common law. A lot of stuff that isn't right and written down, but things that people in the dominant white society understand among each other, that's supposed to go down. That's called common law. It's also called For cultural example, norms. A lot of common law isn't it? followed. Uh, common law what? A lot of common law isn't followed. Oh, yes, it is. I mean, it might be, but it's it's more cultural norms. Like, if yeah, you actually but... had to start, like, prosecuting these cases, the DAs wouldn't have much to say, and they wouldn't actually be able to prosecute them. Oh, yeah, but they can prosecute and not prosecute. That, depending that's on... true. Well, yeah, they can put you up in a bind. Yeah. For example, Cal Rittenhouse, sir. A black person couldn't pay any amount of money to get the kind of assistance Kyle Rittenhouse got in that courtroom, sir. Well, I'm, a black person, you couldn't pay a hundred million dollars to get what Kyle Rittenhouse got in that courtroom. I'm going to give you a fig leaf because I don't know if that's true, just because we don't know how certain things could act or like. All you know, well, no, let me finish a little bit, please. Um, I'm going to give you. A, hold on. Come on, no, no, just a hold little on. bit. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, because hold, hold on. Let's slow it down. All you have to do is show a case study, show any case in history where a black person got in a courtroom and a judge acted as his damn defense lawyer the way they did for Kyle Rittenhouse. Just any case where you couldn't refer to the person you killed as a victim. You couldn't show extremist ties to organizations. You couldn't show premeditated um, plotting to shoot people. What black person ever had that? what Kyle Rittenhouse got in any part of our history, sir. Go ahead. Turn your microphone on, sir. 
there's a few things. Um, first off, I was going to say, I don't think that type of court case would have ever existed because I kind of agree with the fact that if that had happened to a black guy and if it was white people that he had shot, he goes and presents himself to the cops, gets pepper sprayed. He might not have got pepper sprayed with that gun. Like that might have been, you know, an execution of sorts. But that's me just thinking in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Like that's my most, and that's also I don't know that that would happen. Well, um, can you can you retell your thing? Because I was kind of just thinking about my thing, and, and I apologize, I wasn't listening as well as I should. Okay. Oh. Okay, I can okay. I can barely hear. You. Okay. Sorry, I got a dumb phone. Okay. Okay. Now, what was your last question? Oh. You were talking when my mic was off about how it would happen in the courtroom of certain people and would there have been this like legality involved and with what they were involved with and you know their well, actions the night. That's just an example of how the common law of white supremacy works when it's people in the dominant society. You have a court system where people who are classified as white who get on the code of white supremacy and they go out of their way to look out for those classified as white in a way that they would not even conceivably think of doing for a black person. That's how white supremacy works. That's yeah. How, it's just that simple. So you, with that, like, do you think everyone in the, the legal system is actually, so is every white person just a outright white supremacist? Uh, that I don't know, but the ones in okay. power, but the ones who were in power are because uh-huh. we have the system of white supremacy so the white people who are not white supremacists they don't have enough power to stop the system so that must mean that there are a lot of white supremacists within the legal system educational system religious system financial system medical system um and every other system sir so somebody's practicing some white supremacy because this system is not on autopilot it has to be maintained consciously by people who understand the codes of it you see with white people what would you want to see because a lot of the people who espouse these like anti-racist measures or i mean let's just say pro-black in a way like Uh a lot of these people end up being very of the system that you're talking about like, they end up being a little bit more racist than the average person. Are you saying, like, black people or white people? White people. White people in these power structures, when they start espousing anti-racist measures, or let's even say pro-black measures, like, it's almost, when you kind of start looking at them in personally, or just the, the things they've actually believed or said a few times, they end up being more racist than the average just white person, or, I mean, any person, because everyone's Okay, kind so of racist. What, okay, but what white people in, in power positions are spewing pro-black measures? I would like to know that. Who are they? Oh, they don't exist? I'm asking you who they are. If they do, who are they? What's your definition of a pro-black message first? Something that's going to benefit black people specifically. That's what pro-black means. Something that's going to give tangible benefits to a black uh-huh. person specifically. Can you please name anybody white in a power position Who's doing something pro-black under those definitions, sir? Anybody? Currently, no. I mean, I don't know the names of anyone oh, voting oh, for certain things. Oh. Well, I don't. I don't know why you're doing the O thing. I'm not like going against you. No, I agree with you. you. I'm like uh, that's. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, when you said there were pro-black people, okay, I'm, okay, yeah. So we're we're in agreement. There are no pro-black people in power positions, which is what. Well, I don't think that's the stance that you should take with that. There probably are these people. I mean, the fact that I can't name them currently. I mean. If I came back to you and like could name them, like that's stupid too. Like that's not proving a, a point. There are people who are trying to do this, or at least their messaging is attempting to do this. But yeah, you can't name them, and neither can I, and neither can. It's any- not a naming thing. There are people doing this. I mean, anyone listening currently knows that there are people using black messaging, saying, "Hey, I'm into this," and "Hey, I'm pro this." They do exist. No, they don't, sir. That's what white supremacy is. They just don't, sir. That's why nobody but, can point to them. Nobody in a power position. Is, okay, did you think affirmative work? action was a good thing? And I'm asking this for a certain reason, because there are certain people who push that bill through. God, sir, did you? are you really doing that? Are we going to the affirmative No, 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 no. It's, I'm just asking, is that a pro-black thing? No. Cool, I'm okay with that. 
Why not? Because it benefits more white people than black people. Sir, you know. Oh, shit. I did not know about that. Can you tell me about it? Really? You didn't know that? I don't know enough about it as you do. I don't believe that, sir. You're very, you sound like a very intelligent man, sir. I well, I appreciate that. No, but I really, I don't. I'm, I, I, and you don't have to explain it to me now. If you could show I, me later, that's sir, fine. But, sir, okay, sir. I, and I don't believe you're naive to that, sir. You're a Some white people are naive to certain areas of sir, life. Like they live I, in their own realm of sphere and they don't know certain things. Sir, you are a white male. White males are very. How do you know that? Oh, God. Are you a Swami? Okay, sir. Are you one of these people <laughs> that deny your whiteness? Sir? What What are you? What are you, sir? Oh Lord, I gotta hear this. Sir, white. I, you're white. There you go. White. <laughs> there you go. Let's not play that. Okay. What else would we say? All right, y'all don't stop hiding and running from your ethnicity. You white. Be white. Oh no, I've never. I'm okay with being white. I mean, of there's course. nothing wrong with that. I know this. This I know. <laughs> but um, yeah. The point is, hey man, no, no. There are no people in the dominant society who are in power positions that's really trying to do anything. That's the, that's a difference than what I'm trying to say. There are people who are using that messaging, say they're trying to do that. And the fact that you can't name them proves the point, sir. No, 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 no. That doesn't prove the point. The fact that one person doesn't know like certain people who are trying this because he can't remember a bunch of like useless fucking politicians does not mean that there are people trying to do that. And I'm not saying it's good. They're trying to do that. I'm saying that it's bad that they're trying to do that. They are using blackness and also just like the, the plight of black people to push forth their own thing. Okay. Now they're not, they're not helping us. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. I mean, now, listen, that, listen. Okay. Now, now. Saying that those people don't exist. Hold on. Hold people on. who are saying that it doesn't exist is different. Okay. Now you you have a different narrative here. People using the plight of black people to push. That's what I was trying to say. Now that's different. Okay. Yeah. Now that's different. Now that's a whole different conversation. Now that. But those I people think, do exist, right? Hold on, because now you you're kind of blending the two narratives. I'm not trying to blend anything. I'm saying those people exist. That's what. I, that's all I'm trying to say. Which we have this this group of people. Who are trying to do shit like that, and they're, I mean, kind of fucking up. Like, I don't know what you're attempting. Your thing is very strange, but not strange. I'm not trying to call you. Wait, weird, wait, but, explain, um, oh, wait, 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 hold on, wait, hold on. Outside, slow down, you, okay, you gotta slow down. Hey, uh, I believe I'll right, see you later, man. Okay, um, yeah, let's slow down, brother. Let's slow down. Okay, now you said what? Uh, yeah, your phone was acting real funny. And that's why I want your phone to be clear so I can hear you. So, did you say I was my thing is real extreme? No, get, no. like you're just very much outside the Bane narrative. Like the people no. I see who like you are either then these aren't the right words for it because I don't know any of the black community and what they're attempting to do. It's either right. Bane is more like black now national stuff, or like what's your thing? You and don't take this as me saying that you're wrong. Um, you well, think that yeah, I've seen things that black people inhabited America before anyone else? Yes, that's absolutely true. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not, I have no reason to disbelieve you. I mean, These are white I don't think that, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. The, there are white people who said this too, not just me. There's white archaeologists who said this. So, yeah, yeah, but a bunch of people say that. Eh, I'm really not trying to denigrate you here. There's a bunch of people who say a bunch of different things at different times. And the oh, okay. best way to, to view life is when you... So you just don't believe you. it? So you don't... Okay, so why don't you believe it then? Oh, just because I don't know enough about it. I haven't done a no, bunch of research no, on you it. Don't, okay, well, that's say, just say you don't know nothing, uh, enough about it. Just don't say you don't believe that's it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, that's in my attempt to say that I'm not trying to disagard your thing. Well, it's not my that's thing. It's fact. It's not my thing, sir. It's just facts. We're talking facts in history. It's not something that's really well, important. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is, don't get offended when I say that. I know that I'm so you... not offended, sir. Okay, I'm not, I'm not offended, sir. I'm not offended. I'm not offended whatsoever because I already know the facts. That's cool. So I'm, and I'm not. My thing is, I don't necessarily believe that. You can't just say it's facts, and I'm going to believe it. Um, but I like talking to people who believe in different things. So. Right, right, right. But you, you gave an opinion. You said, well, you don't believe it. And, you know, you not believing it doesn't make the facts any less true. That's what I'm saying. To you, I, I'm, yeah. I mean, I think there are different facts for different people. 
No, there's just only one fact. There's one truth. There's a many lies, but only one truth. So. But, yeah, but if I said that to you, like it wouldn't make you believe me. If you said what? If what I believe in is fact. Well, it depends on what you believe in. Well, I mean that that's pretty fair too. Um, right. Yeah, and it's not nothing that I believe. It's not a belief. A belief is something that may or may not exist or may not happen. You believe in religion. You believe in certain deities that you can't see. It's mm-hmm. documented archaeological fact that there were black people on the North American continent way before Europeans. That's this is fair. documented. This, this is not even up for debate. Yeah, but me, if I had to ask questions to figure that out in this current form, like you wouldn't want to do that. So that's why I'm trying to get past it a little bit. Oh, okay. I, I don't know what that means, sir. I'm just talking about facts. There's books, documents. Yeah, yeah, but if I, I don't want to ask, I don't want to have to ask you to explain all of that because it would take a lot of time. So that's the only reason I'm trying to get past it currently right. in the conversation. Oh, okay. But you brought it up. So there was a reason you brought it up and you sound like you brought oh, it up because you no, no, because I was trying to detail like what I know of you. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. This has been fun, man. You're fun to talk to. Yes, indeed. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. I hope the conversation was constructive. Yeah, man. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Here we go. What's up, Dr. Aki? I see you in here. All right. Let's let's get a couple. Let me get you in here, Dr. Aki, in a second, sis. Let me get a couple of these other folks in here. Hold on. Let me get a couple of people. Let's get um. Let's get Marin in here. Marin C. I'm on the phone, buddy. Hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me get Marin C in here. Marin, let's hop on, Marin. Let's get Marin in here. Marin, where you at, buddy? Whoa, good. What happened? Oh, had the speaker. All right, Marin, let's give it a try. Marin C, let's give it a try. Yes, how are you, Marin? Fine, thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Now, where are you from, Aaron? So I'm from Germany, and I was listening a little bit, just a little bit. I have no clue what was going on here. But um, mm-hmm. so I want to, to ask you, what was the topic? Um, we were talking about how foundational Black Americans are often sabotaged by other groups. So we're just kind of coming up with ways to figure out how we as foundational Black Americans can stop other groups from sabotaging us and undermining us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But did you have anything that, that you wanted to get off your chest? Sound like you had something on your mind, sir. Yeah, I have, but um, I don't want to... Go ahead. No, 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 seriously. So don't don't get me okay. wrong. So it's not that I'm shy or, I don't know, not to, not be That's able to solve conflict. Mind. But it's just um, I'm really drunk and it was just... An, it was uh, I was just interested to know... What was the topic? Because I joined uh, really late, and uh, I didn't know what was going on here. So, it was just for my my own interest. So, just oh, for okay. better understanding, right? Okay. So, you... yeah. Okay. But I, thank I... you, but thank you. I will mute myself. All right, man. Don't. Okay. All right. You don't. You don't hop on, and you ain't got nothing to say. This is not a nine seven six number for dudes. All right, we've got Dr. Aki in here. What's up, Henrietta Snacks? Let's get Dr. Aki in here. Hey, Tariq. Hey, beloved. How are I you? I am here? well. I'm going to be super fast because I know we want to get new yes, people ma'am. and new people's thoughts in here. And I'm also joining late. So I'm sure you guys have already brought up some really great points about how we're being sabotaged from the outside. Like yeah. people yes. trying to come in and kind of maybe weasel their way in, play $5 FBA. But one other thing I want to point out that um, I've been seeing mainly just online, though, is that there is also a growing number of people popping up. And I'm not even going to say their names. I'm not going to inadvertently give them shine. And I also wonder if they're really FBA themselves. But guys, please yeah. also keep an eye out for some of these spaces that are popping up using the FBA hashtag. Sometimes they hashtag your name. And they're in there saying wild, reckless stuff particularly about non-FBA black people. Um, It was happening mainly during that weekend where there was the major push to try and get the um, African students out of Ukraine. 
But there yeah. were some yeah. spaces popping up where people veered off and saying stuff. SP, SBA people just aren't on. Stuff like um, they should be rounded up and put into concentration camps. Weird stuff yeah. that raises a red flag. Yeah, that ain't cool. And what I think yeah. they're trying to do, because FBA is so solid and we're so focused on our stuff and unproblematic, they're trying to say stuff to get that to trend so then they can have false outrage about it. So they can't get right. you to say no crazy stuff because you don't think like that or anyone else would sit. Right. They're trying right. to get that trending. So guys, just keep an eye out for that and be sure to mute or block people when you see that. Yes, indeed. Good looking out, Ivy. Right. Good looking Take out. Take care. Thank yeah, my sister made a very good point. Yeah, I, I've seen that type of stuff. Come on, I've seen that kind of stuff, and we got to watch out for it. We got to watch it because I've seen a couple of rooms where you know people in there talking real reckless, and um, we got to watch people. Uh, somebody I saw um, TBA, he was doing the show the other day, and some guy called up using all types of um, LGBT epithets, and they immediately cut his stream. You understand? So we got to watch people like that. They'll come in the circles and start saying real reckless stuff for the whole, the, the sole purpose of bringing heat to somebody's page. So we got to watch that type of stuff. We got to watch people who come in the circles talking real crazy. You know, that ain't codified and that's not what we're on. And again, a lot of these folks pretend to be FBA and they'll come in the room and say something stupid. And we've had people call up here trying to pretend to be FBA and then you know, we bust them out and then they admit, okay, yeah, I ain't from here. I'm whoop de whoop. So we got to watch a lot of people who try to do all that slick stuff. And, and we got to watch people who ain't really trying to, they're not really trying to build anything. They're not really trying to get on code. You got a lot of people who try to get in our circles and they get into what I call prison plebiscite battle. We got to watch out for that too. Because we start talking about what we need to do culturally and what we need to do to, to get stuff done. And then you got folks who want to argue about status and names. Well, we shouldn't use black because, you know, black, if you look at the dictionary and the eyes of the law, that, uh, when, that's plebiscite talk. That's another thing. Y'all watch out for plebiscite deal. All right. Watch out for that. What we need to do, we need to call ourselves something else. We need to call ourselves this and we need to... Uh, when folks get into that, we got to watch out for that. We got to watch out for it because these are a lot of time wasting tethers and a lot of time wasting trolls. Watch out for that. All right. Because these are punks. A lot of these dudes, man, ain't, nobody's trying to bust a grape. Look, we as Foundation of Black Americans, we are trying to get our minds and our culture together so we can better deal with white supremacy. So when we stand up against white supremacy, we got a solid front. We can do what we need to do and we have enough codified people. That's the goal. You understand? We're in a war with these folks, so we have to get our culture intact and we have to know who's who so that we can be on code with who's who. We got to be on code with each other so that we can be protected with each other. When you have these dudes in the middle of a war sitting up here trying to argue about what color uniform we need to wear, these are punks. Deep down, these are punk coward type of dudes who ain't going to bust a grave. They ain't really trying to do anything. They ain't really trying to stand up against white supremacy. They're comfortable in captivity and what niggas do in prison, sit around here and babble. That's plebiscite battle. See, one thing I can respect a white boy with, when they go to prison, what they do, white boys be sitting up here thinking about how to break out. White boys don't be in there converting to no damn religion. They don't be in there walking around with a kufi. They don't be in there doing all. White boys in there looking at the, the walls, the, the, the plumbing, the sinks. They're looking at what time the, the, the sales lock. They're looking at what time the guards go home. They're out there doing logistics. And they get with other white folks who can join them and they're looking at the enemy who they perceive as the enemy which is the system they look at the system as an enemy that's why you see when people break out of prison it's usually white boys i can respect that i can respect that negroes be up in jail plebiscite babbling converting to different religions gang banging bussy popping you understand? It turns into a damn captivity show. And dudes do that on the outside, too. When we're talking about challenging white supremacy, you got people out here want to sit up here and argue status all day. Well, we should, 
Well, I don't know about this. We should call ourselves something else because under the law, under Article 13 of the, the, the plebiscite dictionary under Black's law, it defines a person of color as a Negro, as a non-entity person. And well, shut the hell up. Shut up. Whatever you call yourself, let's be clear, you're still under the system of white supremacy. I want black folks to get off this thing where if you call yourself some kind of magic word that the white supremacist is going to back off. It don't work like that. The terms we use is to get us on code. Let me say that one more time. The terms we use is to get us on code. That's why we use foundational black American, because that gets us on code. People who are classified as black who are descendants of slaves in America, that gets us on code because we identify who we are. Our designation isn't to impress anybody. Our designation is for us to get cultural power, which is going to turn into economic power, then political power, and all other forms of power. First, we got to get our culture together because that's what a nation is. A nation is just a cultural group who understands their identity and they have a commonality. That's all a nation is. See, this is why this is such a power move that we're doing, acknowledging who we are as a lineage. All right. Watch these Negroes who want to sit around here and talk about different names and all of that. The, the name is fine. The name is fine because all of these other names, again, that offers us up to be exploited by other groups to come in and exploit our culture. Like African-American. When we use that term, that's a kumbaya term. Anybody can say they're African-American. So that messes up our culture because anybody can come in and exploit it. You see? Us designating our group is for our cultural significance. Don't let nobody tell you different. Don't let nobody get around you plebiscite battling. We got way too much of that out here. Let me get some more people in here. Glad to have y'all in here. We got a lot of folks in here. Much respect to you guys. And shout out to everybody who got that, um, the March Madness package we had on officialfba.com. And you guys can go to the official foundationalblackamerican.com website, officialfba.com. Uh, we sold out in three days. We sold out of that wonderful package. Shout out to everybody who got that package. I'm on the phone, son. Let's, um... Let's get, who is this person? I see a lot of people trying to get in here. Let's get a WAPO. Let's get WAPO in here. WAPO, hop on, sir. All right, WAPO. All right, WAPO, let's do it. Where you at, man? All right. WAPO, and then we'll get HSI. We'll get him. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm right. out here, bro. Okay, now who is this? Um, Wapo. This Wapo? All right, what's up, Wapo? What's on your yeah, mind? Yeah, well, I think the, the best way to get people uh, to, uh, to stop people from sabotaging us is uh, just tell the truth. And I think that's what we do, and that's why they, they mention you like that. Like, I think one of the best things you say, bro, is the fact that they you say that black Americans are not immigrants to this country, but sometimes I know they don't quite get where you're what you're how you're what, what you mean when you say that we didn't immigrate to the country even if you go right. by the history that all these groups of people come from all over the world want to use even with their history we were still here before the vast majority of these people were here yeah so if you yeah. if, if you can explain it like that and these they, i don't think they understand just how fundamental how foundational we are to the country Oh, you're break you're breaking up, sir. Very good point, but you, your phone was breaking up, sir. Let's get HSI. HSI. Let's get him in here. HSI. I don't know what your other name is, but yeah, turn your speak turn your microphone on, buddy. I'm Hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, is that my phone or your guys phone mess it up? Everybody's I, I can hear you a little bit. You're going in and out. But what's up, brother? Okay, so when you use the term um, foundation of black American, you're talking about American who was born and originated in the United States and were black, enslaved. Yes, black people who are not immigrants in this country. That's what I mean. Right. So um, 
in a sense, um, the group doesn't represent blacks who are immigrant. No. Because I'm from Jamaica. You're, you're from Jamaica? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. And I see you're myself a black American. I see myself equal to every black people, whether they're slaves or not slaves. Why? Say that again. I see myself equal to every black people. This is not about equality. This is about a lineage, sir. It's not about equality. It's about a lineage. Right. Most definitely. Right. So um, a, lineage, a lineage is something then in your terms that doesn't let anyone else in. A lineage by definition means a specific group. If a specific group has a specific lineage to a specific land, that makes that group unique from other groups. Like I'm not Jamaican. I love Jamaica. I go to Jamaica. I enjoy Jamaica. But if I go to Jamaica, I'm not a Jamaican. Right. So you also advocate for the freedom of black people. Am I right? But foundational black Americans only. Okay. Now you're projecting. Now, why are you projecting? Because I didn't even remotely say that or I did not even imply that. So why are you projecting, sir? Well, uh, projecting is not really the word. I'm just trying to understand because I've been listening to you. Now, so I'm... The, Because I didn't even remotely say anything halfway close to that. So why did you say that? Okay. So um, do you recognize? Let's try this again. Why did you ask me that? Do I want the freedom of everybody except or just foundational black Americans? Why did you ask me that? Let's try it again. Turn your microphone on, sir. Because, see, this is what we're going to have to clear up. When you get in these spaces, I do not okay. want... Okay, I don't want people coming in with bad faith arguments or questions, okay? Because that's, if you're going to be passive aggressive, just say what's on your mind and get the aggression out. Let's not dance around because I'm not, I'm not here to waste time. I don't like any type of passive aggressive energy. If you got some on your spirit, yeah. say that shit with your chest, brother. But well, don't this is pass first, aggressive this questions is like that. Let, 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 hold on, slow down. Don't ask me yeah. passive aggressive ass questions like that. If you got something to say, say it with your chest. Now, okay. What's the problem? You got a problem. Now, what, what's the problem that you have? Okay. So, this is my first time ever um, listening to someone um, speaking uh, and refer to foundation Black Americans because okay. when I'm the leaders. Okay. okay. Let's try this again. What problem do you have? You, you, ha you obviously have a problem with it. Okay. You have a problem with it. What problem do you have with it? Because I'm not going to do the passive aggressive thing. Let's just say it with your chest, sir. Again, what problem do you have with foundational black Americans acknowledging our lineage? Turn your microphone on, sir. Okay, back on. So right. I, I am used to... Um, you know, listening to different groups and hearing different groups' opinion. And uh, nothing that any any group says offend me. I'm just trying to get an understanding so I know. Because this is my first time even hearing this term. When I first um, signed on and I saw FBA, I even went on Google to Google it to see what it meant. Okay. And do you understand what it means? And I've explained what it means. You Google what it meant. And why do you have a problem with this, sir? Well, it's no problem at all. It's just an understanding. And now that you said what you said, uh, so let me ask you a question. So, so what would make you think foundational black Americans would not want the freedom of all black people? What would even make you go there? Well, I, 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 I guess I didn't mean it that way, but uh, do they do foundational black Americans advocate for the freedom of all black people? We're the only people who been fighting for the freedom of all black people we're the only people that's been doing that that's why i'm offended by that question we're the only people that's been doing that consistently and you're jamaican marcus garvey didn't get the pan-african movement going on over in jamaica he got it going on over here he had to come here in order for that movement to take wings we were the ones supporting freedom for all black people globally sir you understand well, and I accept the Marcus Garvey movement, too, just the same, and uh, the support that he got in America from the uh, black people that right. was in America. The foundation the of black Americans, yes. It was foundation of black Americans who were supporting Garvey and made Garvey a thing. 
Okay. And I do understand that if it wasn't uh, the support that he got in America from Americans, I mean, half of the world wouldn't even know who Marcus Garvey is. Right. Absolutely. Yes, most definitely. But um, Marcus Garvey movement sometimes have been uh, uh, described or have been taken for a supremacist movement, which in sense, it's supremacist because it's want, it, it wants to see black people have equal rights and justice among all other nations, just the same, because Marcus Garvey believed that every one of us had a right to be here, whether we are of color or not, but no how man... Was that supreme? How was that supreme? Well, not described by me to be supreme, you know, because a lot of people believe that Marcus Garvey was more of a person who hated white people instead of trying to uh, unite black people. And the system itself fought against him for... I would say almost all his life just because of that. But one thing I want to say to um, you, my brother, when Marcus Garvey came back to Jamaica, he warned us as brothers and he said to us, we have to beware of this man or this person that looks like us, but he's not of us. So I understand when you say foundational, like American, we have to be uh, vigilant of who we let in. Okay. Yeah. And I do accept that. Okay. Do you think, because uh, one thing that, that I've seen in America and one thing I've, I've have been promoted over the years in America is black people is telling black people that they have a right to vote. And when I look at uh, the voting system in America, every elected official turned their back on black voters. So uh, do you think... Okay, thank, thank you, brother. This, this dude is just all over the place. I'm trying to rock with him. I had to let him go. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what this dude was. He just... All right. He just went all over the place. What was he talking about? I'm trying to roll with him. He went from Marcus Garvey, then talking about supremacy, then... Well, Bumba Clyde, do you think he's supreme? He, he, Marcus Garvey was going to be a supremacist and the white people didn't like him. And then he hated the white people. And then he said, watch out for the, watch out for the people who look like you, but uh, they smell different. And uh, voting, what about the voting? If you vote, what if you don't vote and don't get the rights? And if you go to prison... And if you go to prison and you fall out of a tree and you break your arm, bumba clot, what are you going to do then? Guan boil some water. What the hell is he? What are you talking about, man? He's just all over the place. I uh, I tried, guys. And so and some people, I'll try to listen, but you're gonna have to land a plane somewhere. He's just circling around. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's talk talking about. This dude, he he smoked one of them ganjas. He smoked one of them Jamaican ganjas. Okay. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. You lost me, brother. I'm I'm trying to rock with you. Okay. Crypto lawyer. I've had you on here before, I think. Crypto lawyer. All right. Crypto lawyer. Hop on, man. You look familiar, crypto lawyer. I think I've had you on before. Yes, sir. How are you, Tariq? I'm good, crypto lawyer. But what did we talk about before? We, uh, you asked where I was from. Uh, you thought I was European. I told you I was Israel, Israeli, and uh, we just kind of spoke about that. And, and okay. then, you know, that was really the entirety of it. A little bit was, you know, don't be afraid of my white heritage and my European ancestry. And then you, and I told you I wasn't. I was actually Israeli. Um, that's where I was born, and what's that's where I came from. And you know, we. Okay. we we kind of just talked about that a little bit. Got it. All right, what's on your mind? I want to talk to you about gun laws a little bit. Uh, you spoke about it with someone else, and um, I'm an attorney. I'm down in Florida, and um, yeah. w- want to talk to you about gun laws because you know you mentioned, and it's in my mind that you know you said people down in Florida, you can get gun laws. It's willy nilly. Um, you know that's actually not the case, and. Last time we spoke, unfortunately, I got muted a lot. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Um, but 
you know, I, I'd like to talk about gun laws a little bit because, um, you know, being being a former prosecutor for over a decade with the Department of Justice now doing criminal defense, um, I've seen both sides of it. And, you know, the more restrictive the gun laws get, uh, it, you know, it, it really doesn't matter because of the criminals. They're not going to abide by the laws. They don't go into buy guns. And Florida is one of the few states where we don't have constitutional carry. We're actually pretty strict down here. I know that there's a perception that Florida is kind of like Texas, but we're not. Um, so so just wanted to kind of follow up on the gun laws and talk to you about that, because a little bit of what you were talking about it, you know, is, it, it's just not true. You know, guns are actually very difficult to get for, for the normal person. The more laws that we have impede the normal person, whether it's white or black. Now, of course, if you're a convicted felon, that brings you into a whole new category with the Second Amendment. Um, and then obviously you look at places like Chicago that have some of the strictest gun laws where it really doesn't matter because guns come from outside the area. So, you know, just I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of but I've seen a lot of people out there in Florida mm -hmm. with carrying guns. It seems very easy. I've seen people walking around with guns on their hips out there in Florida. Yeah, I'm not sure where you saw it because I'm down in South Florida and constitutional carry. We tried to pass it again this session. And when I say we, I just mean the Florida legislature. I'm actually not a fan of constitutional carry per se. Yeah. Um, but it did not pass again. So, uh, you, you know, you can't have it on your hip. You can do you can do a concealed carry, obviously. Um, but okay. but but there are things that inhibit a concealed carry as well uh, for people. But, you know, I guess my question is, um, you know, as far as what you were talking about with 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 gun laws being willy nilly um, to come back to it, I guess my question was, you know, do you see gun laws not as written, per se, but as applied? Do you see them as being um, differential between whites and blacks? Um, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. OK. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's clearly different based on common law. Like in Ohio, that's a open carry state. Mm. They shot Tamir Rice, who had a toy gun. He didn't point his gun at anybody. He was in the park with a toy gun, and they knew he was a kid. And they were blew him away. Mm. So yeah, right. Well, I mean, that's more of an action by someone, which I obviously don't agree with. I'm talking more along the lines of, and then when you talk about common law, you know, they're short of Louisiana, which practices actually civil law which they got from the french common law exists but it's not applied anymore so all of the states yes, yes sir yes it is no all the states have statutes which are codified so we don't follow no. common law anymore we actually have statutes now no no sir yes common law is just what people do and agree to common law is what we saw with cal rittenhouse okay mm. uh, the stuff you saw in that courtroom a black person wouldn't get that in a million years the stuff that I saw was based on common law, sitting up here talking about you can't call the people Cal Rittenhouse shot victims. That's common law. It's not written down anywhere. It's a common law. It's something that somebody said who's white and other white people agree to it and they're not going to punish them based on what they agree to. That's a common law. It's not written down, but it's something mm -hmm. that they agree to. Now, if a black person went in there, they wouldn't do that in a million years. They would never say a person you shot, we're not going to call them a victim. Common laws, was, was, we're going to go to the gun laws, Philando Castile up there in Minnesota. He was a Second Amendment advocate. He legally had a gun. Officer Yanez, who went to a bulletproof training class, which is run by white supremacists who teach officers how to kill people and get away with it. He went to one of those classes and blew Philando Castile away, who was a legal gun carrier, and Officer Yanez got off. That's common law, sir. Common law is applied when it comes to black people. And that's an understanding that people who believe in white supremacy all get together and practice. Common law. Extremely real, sir. Okay, let me know when I can reply, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so this is with all due respect, because I do come in here and I do enjoy the conversations. You know, obviously I don't agree with some things you say, but um, that's not common law. You're talking about potentially past pattern and practices. You're talking about the Florida Code of Evidence. You're talking about the Federal Code of Evidence. 
but that's not common law. So I guess what I would ask you is, what is your definition of common law? Because I know what it is, and what you're describing is not common law. That's common law. When you do something, and you have a certain statute that are not written down, and they through through the legal system. That's all the common law is, and white supremacy itself is the common law. Okay, I'm, uh, Tariq, I'm sorry. I the very first part cut out. I couldn't hear the the first part of what you said. I'm sorry. Okay. Common laws, those are just statutes that are agreed upon, that are not mm-hmm. written down, that people within the dominant society all agree upon. That's all the common law is. Just like well, common law marriage. All right? Common law sure, marriage. Sure, sure, sure. Right. sure. Same thing. But, right, but statutes by definition have to be written down. So your definition is, as you would say, a non sequitur because a common law must be... You said a common law is a statute that's not written down. That doesn't right. exist. That, that doesn't exist, a sir. Verbal a, statute, statute, a verbal uh, statute, sir. A verbal statute was very There's no real. such thing. There's yes, no such is. thing. Yeah, there's an, yeah, there's another Name one for yeah. me. Name one for me. There's white, not. Sir, white supremacy itself is a verbal statute now. That's a verbal statute? Yes, it is. It Where can I find it? it? It's verbal. That's it's verbal. It Who do I have to, to ask about it? Listen, it used to be written down, and they said, okay, we got to codify white supremacy. Let's do and let's say everything is equal. We're still going to verbally practice the statues that were written. Okay, that's what sure. a common law is. Sure, sure, sure. And I and I, Tariq, I absolutely agree with that. Except for the point, it's not a statute. Common law. If if you want to say common law are past practices and patterns, I would agree with you on that. To say it's a verbal statute, yep. those two words cannot go together. Sir. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Show me one. De- Show me de- one. Define what a statute is. A statute is a codified law that has been passed through legislature, signed by the Congress or the president or the governor, and actually codified, written into law as a statute, which people no. must obey. No, 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 no. Yes, that, no, yes that, it is, Tariq. No. Yes, it is. The general definition of a statute is just an understanding or an agreement. That's Absolutely the, not. That's the Absolutely general not. definition of it. Absolutely not. The general definition of a statute, a verbal statute, just like a well, verbal is, agreement. Okay, why why do they have the term verbal is agreement? Is that, hold on, is is that okay. your definition of a statute? Because okay. I just gave you the legal definition. Okay, sir. Why do they have the term verbal agreement that's used in courtrooms? You'll have to be more specific, Tariq. I don't know what okay. you mean by that. For, uh, sir, in court, they say all the time, well, you yeah. guys made a verbal agreement. Sure. And we're going to act on this verbal agreement that was made, and we're going to rule in this person's favor based on a verbal agreement. You Why mean like a stipulation of fact? A verbal agreement. What's a verbal agreement? Well, again, Trig, I'm I'm really trying to follow. Are you asking about like a stipulation of okay, fact well, or a contract? Gonna go, okay, we're going to get into the this verbal. No, no, contract. I'm just asking okay. for an okay. example. Okay, uh, verbal contracts. There are situations where there have been verbal contracts made. Sure, the sure, yes, contract. yes, there are verbal contracts all the time. Yes, sir. Right, which is the same thing as a verbal statute. Same thing. Verbal agreement, verbal contract, verbal statute. Same thing. Tariq, a verbal statute doesn't exist. You're making it up, sir. Okay. You can kick so, me, but it doesn't exist. Okay. It, it, it's okay. not going to change. I, okay. I've been a lawyer for 15 years. It doesn't right. exist. Okay, so verbal statutes, verbal contracts, verbal agreements. Those are all the, different things. Those okay. are all different things, Tariq. You what can't the, make those all one. They're all different things, sir. Okay. If there is an agreement or statute, a law, because a statute is basically a law to a certain extent. There are a verbal law, laws. There are no verbal laws. Laws there are statutes are. and codified, sir. There are verbal agreements. There, yes, are, there verbal are verbal contracts. laws, sir. There are okay. unwritten laws well, and rules. Yes, there are. Well, if they're unwritten, how do people well, follow them then? Verbally, sir. For example, you had... Who do I ask sir? about these verbal laws that I don't know sir. about? For example, sir, in this country, they had something called sundown laws. They weren't Correct. written down, but the sundown laws were... After six o'clock, black people are supposed to be out of certain towns all over this country. After six o'clock, it was understood. It was a verbal law that a black person had to be out of town by six o'clock for a no. little. No, that's an agreement that was never written down or codified. Sir, or that was a law that they would kill you over, sir. That's, I know, that's a law. They would kill you if mm. you broke that verbal law, sir. That's, that's 100% what... of a law. It was a statute. It was a verbal statute. They that's a hard. Talking. That's they a would, horrible thing to have, and I'm uh, being serious on that. And, and they did it, though. They did right. it. 
And that was a verbal statue that they had. So all over this country, get a book called Sundown Towns by James Lowen. He broke this down all over the country. There was a verbal statue where black people would get killed if they were in certain parts of the country after six months. They didn't write this down on the law books because it was unconstitutional. But the sure. white supremacist said... Sure. And, and, and Tariq, that's why it was never a law or a statute because it was unconstitutional. The it may have been a horrible... There. The just, punishment. Tariq, let me finish, Tariq. Tariq, just let me finish, please. Uh -huh. It may it, just just please let me finish. Uh -huh. It may it may have been a horrible thing to do. I don't agree with it. It may have been a horrible past pattern in practice. It may have been an agreement, but it was not a law. It was not codified. It was none of that. So it when you was say verbal, law because it was enforced, sir. A law is anything that's enforced. It was enforced, sir. That's what a law is. Lots of things are enforced that aren't contracts. I'm so sorry, a that law aren't is anything codifications. That's enforced, sir, a law, it, it, a law has nothing to do with the judicial system. Do you understand that? Uh, absolutely not. The law is actually enforced in the judicial system. No, it's not, sir. No, it's not. Well, I think one of us has to go to law school again. Okay, well, somebody better understand what law is. Does the law of gravity have to go through law school? That's actually a theory, but yeah, sure. Okay, no, no, it doesn't. Okay, that you have the law of gravity, the law of relativity. Sir, let's be very clear. You don't have to go to school for a law. Law is just something that's enforced, something that's enforced by people or enforced by nature, sir. And the white supremacists, they enforce these common white supremacist laws that were not written down, but it was understood among white supremacists that they were going to enforce these laws for verbal, that were verbal, and they still practice this right now. Okay, well, that I don't know. I'm sure that you knew, you know more about that than I do. Mm -hmm. I am just, I am just saying that you cannot have today, as we sit here, as I talk to you, we cannot have a verbal law, and it doesn't make it a law just yeah. because someone else enforces it. That's absolutely yes, incorrect, it does. So, sir. A white supremacist working in law enforcement. Is I'm not talking about a white supremacist, that's, Tariq. That's I know I'm that's your about. thing, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's here. exactly what we're talking about. What no, I'm talking about? about verbal laws don't exist, and you're trying to tell me after 15 years of being an attorney and being DOJ that it exists. I'm it telling you it's not. Sometimes it's okay to be wrong. Sometimes it's okay to tell the truth about white supremacy. White supremacy makes the laws as they go along. Okay. I mean, I don't Absolutely. know that, but yes, I'll take yes. your word for it. Yes, it's true. Sir, you can have a white supremacist working in law enforcement <laughs> blow a black person's brains out for any reason. And they can get away with it legally, the common law. They can sit up here and make up lies about it and get away with it. That's a verbal statute, a verbal law, sir. It's That's common law. Tariq, it's not. You can say at the same time different ways, but it's not. It's it not. is. And it's called white supremacy. The law is white supremacy. Okay. Well, anyway, um, and I enjoy. And, and, and we can go even, even deeper. If you look at the, the if since you a lawyer, the. Um, uh, I mean, I was going to stop because we're just going around in circles here, but we're if you want to waste not. more time. Or... No, we we're are, not. because you keep saying verbal law and common law like it actually exists today and people enforce it. Tell me the last time a case was brought in court under common law or a verbal law. You cannot do that because it hasn't been done in 20 years yes, at minimum. Cal Rittenhouse was common law. That was not common law, Tariq. That was that, past pattern and practice of Florida rules past, of evidence and procedure. That was past practice white supremacy that we saw the common okay, law well, white supremacy. okay however you want to phrase it is fine but it's not common can, law and it's not a verbal statute was. what happened with kyle rittenhouse was the law of white supremacy you know why okay because well black, that's because because, because a black person couldn't get that sir you cannot show a case where a black person had a courtroom act like that for a black person that means it was a common law of white supremacy sir if you could show another statue another law where they did that for a black person then I will agree to that. I will agree that it doesn't exist. But you cannot show any black person that had a courtroom bend over backwards and a judge act as a damn defense attorney for a, a, a killer like they did for Kyle Rittenhouse, sir. Nobody. Nobody black. Doesn't happen. That's a common law. Where you at? Turn your microphone on, sir. It was on until you muted me. I didn't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I said, how many trials have you done, Tariq? Sir, I go under, I'm in trial every time I walk out the house under the system. So you don't want to, so again, you don't want to answer my question? 
I'm telling you, I'm on trial when I walk out of my house, sir. No. How many trials have you been in in court? When, when I walk court. out of my house. In court, sir. A, in court. A black person. I'm, in court, sir. I'm, in tr- I'm under trial every time I walk out of my house. In court, sir. How many times? In court. I'm in court in the streets of America, sir. Okay. That's my have... court right there. Tariq, I'm going to let you go. Have a great night. It was a pleasure. I appreciate it. So Thank much. you, sir. All right. Yeah, you're not going to play that game. Yeah, foundational black American. And in, any black person, when you walk out of your house, you're in court, okay? Because the race soldiers are allowed to be the judge, jury, and the damn executioner. That's your courtroom right there. Driving your car out here is court right there because you have a judge, a juror, and a damn executioner right here who has a green light to blow your brains out. All right? Let's not get it twisted. As a black person, there's the common law of white supremacy is an ever present threat over our heads. And that's what I focus on. See, they want to talk all of this legalese. No, it boils down to white supremacy. And he knows that. When black folks are out here dealing with these race, so that's why he didn't want to talk about the police. Oh, let's not talk about the cops. Yeah, I'm talking about them. That's your law right there. And they get to make up laws anytime they want to. They can run up on you and say, hey, I thought you had a weapon. That's a common law. I thought that you looked threatening. That's a common law. You look like a suspect. That's a common law. That's a common law. And I had to shoot you because I feared for my life because your black skin scared me. That's a common law because it gets enforced against us. And these white race soldiers don't get punished for that in large numbers. That makes it a common law. See, black folks, don't let them try to slip you up with legalese. White supremacy is its own law. They use the I'm white and I say so law against us any time. With Philando Castile, the young brother, they ran up in his apartment, the wrong apartment, and blew this brother away. Shot this brother sleeping on his sofa. That's a common law. Those race soldiers didn't get punished. That's common law. Don't let them try to fool you with all of this legalese gibberish. Just make it simple. It all boils back down to white supremacy. That's all it is. Now, who is this guy here? All right, let's get Feral Beast. All right, let's get this guy in here. Feral Beast, hop on here. All right, Feral Beast. Hello? Hey, uh, what is legalese? So you mean legal jargon? Okay. Do you think that the what black Alex Jones? Okay, what's your name, sir? You're, you're trolling already, and it's already... No, I just, I've name? been listening to you, and you're telling this man that you know more about law. Okay, okay, slow down. Okay, fix you a nice mayonnaise sandwich, and slow down. Okay, you're coming in hostile. Let's try it again. Okay? Now, Mr. Farrell, what's your name, sir, and where you're from? Introduce yourself to the room. Just My name don't is hop Will. In. Uh, sorry. Where you're from? I'm where you're from, from Pittsburgh. Okay. And I just feel like you kind of gave that man the short end of the stick whenever he's a legal expert is all. uh, I'm a legal expert on white supremacy. You're a filmmaker, sir. I'm a legal expert on white supremacy. I'm a victim of white supremacy. And I'm a victim of white supremacy, sir. So I'm an advocate for the end of white supremacy. And what are you doing to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice, sir? I stand beside my black brothers and I probably shouldn't speak for them. I apologize. Okay, you stand beside your black brothers and do what? I, I will stand beside them. I shouldn't speak for them because I can't understand their problems. I'm not black, so I can't understand them. You know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for them because I don't know what they live through. You stand beside them and do what? Well, if anybody were to threaten them, you know, obviously, I, if, if we had to take up arms, I'd take up arms with them. But, uh, I mean, other than that, I'm not going to try and speak for a black man and his struggle because I've never lived his struggle. But what have you done about the white supremacists within your community? That's the problem. Standing next to a victim of white supremacy, that's kind of pointless. What about the active white supremacists within your community? What are you doing about them? I mean, we went to the protests last summer whenever, uh, you know, we had the protests. Uh, you know, we all loaded up the car and we all went on protests. And even though the police were there and, you know, me with my clean legal record, I still hung out despite the police presence, even though I knew I could have gotten in trouble. And, uh, you know, just kind of tried to play a body shield. I can't really speak for you guys because I'm not black, but I can stand beside you guys. 
Okay. Going to the protest, how did that help black people? I was a body shield in between the police and the black people. Oh, okay. Well, we need you in the courtroom. How come you're not a... We need you as a juror. We need you to go in there as a juror. And see, this is the problem. We see thousands and thousands of white people at these protests, but we can't get 12 of you in a goddamn courtroom. How come we can't get 12 of you in a courtroom to get some of these race soldiers locked up where we really need you? Uh, I mean, you have a good point there. Um, I, whenever I yeah, do that, really do that's do a I great point. Up. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's a very good point there, right? Yeah, you damn right I got a good point. All right. I don't, don't want to hear no more babbling. All right. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, y'all show up to the protest, but you're never on the damn jury. You're never on the jury for Tamir Rice. You're never on the jury for Philando Castile. You're never on the jury for Tam- for um, um, Trayvon Martin. You're never on the jury for black folks when we really need you. When it comes to punishing a white supremacist, you ain't nowhere to be found, but you're somewhere twerking at a Black Lives Matter rally. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Y'all know that's not effective. Yeah, y'all have no problem going to a damn protest because you know at 6 o'clock you're going home. You're going right back to your crib and the black folks are going back to the hood to get gaffled up by the police. So yeah, you have no problem having a day trip to a protest. You get some good food, hear some good music, have some folks twerking with you, and then you go back home and get back in. And let me be very clear. These same people at these protests, I didn't said this before, these are the same ones that's on these juries. Let's be very clear. Some of these people are on these jury pools. These people will sit up here and acquit a cop for shooting a black person, and then they'll be the main ones out there at the protest eating some buffalo wings, dancing. Don't get it twisted. These are the same people who sit up here, and they're on these little secret grand juries, making sure these cops who run up in black folks' homes, killing the babies and killing the, the, the women, making sure that these guys don't get no charges, and then, then they'll put on a damn a Black Panther t-shirt and be out there standing in front of Turkey Leg Hut with all the other black folks talking about fight to power. So yeah, they'll play both sides of the argument. Let's not ever miss that point in the game. All right. And speaking of protest, speaking of protest, shout out to my sister Teslin. My sister Teslin did an interview. She's, I don't know if you're in here, Teslin. I don't know if you might be in here, but Teslin, my sister, she's clicked in with Benjamin Crump. My sister Teslin, she says something to the effect of um, that I don't like Benjamin Crump. Let's be, let, let, me, let me clear that up. Let me clear that up real quickly. And Teslin, that's my girl. Shout out to Teslin. Um, let's be clear. I don't dislike Benjamin Crump. So let's be very clear. I do not dislike Benjamin Crump. All right. I don't dislike Benjamin Crump. I did have a problem with Crump making these little deals with these cops and these police units. Him and some of these other lawyers. I did have a problem with that. And I still and he's kind of chilled out with that, which is good, because I've talked to some of these lawyers making these little janky deals where everybody gets riled up over a police killing. And then we get out here, we hit in the streets and I'm on the phone banging on these damn prosecutors and sheriffs and and police chiefs. And then all of a sudden, Crump shows up with a a family member. They talking about how they forgive everybody that I had a major problem with major problem. And luckily, Crump has kind of chilled out with that type of thing. But that was a big problem. And a lot of us had a problem with that. We out here banging heavy. And then y'all running around here, y'all have made some little secret settlement deal behind the, the scenes. And part of the deal is for the family member to come out here and say how much they forgive and forgive. And then there's a check waiting on them. And then the cop gets acquitted or they drop the charges on the damn cop. That type of stuff I ain't with. And we didn't holler at them lawyers about doing these little janky deals because that puts a target on everybody's back. And so, yeah, I had a problem with that. But Crump, I don't have a problem with Crump. Let's be very clear. I do not have a problem with Benjamin Crump. And he's kind of chilled out with that nonsense. So, yeah, we got to get everybody on the code for real. We All that little ambulance chasing shit for a check, nah. Because I'm like, I, I get offended by that because I'm out here chewing these damn police chief's asses out, man. I'm out here going in on these folks. And I'm out here yelling at them and going in and doing what I do. And then all of a sudden, the, the family's on TV with a, a new damn lace front holding Crump's hand, talking about where the Lord... 
the Lord love everybody. Everybody need forgiveness. I'm like, man, come on, man. Uh, that that ain't cool at all. So yeah, that is not cool. All that hugging, hugging these people, they can kill your family. And your, the lawyers got these folks hugging because y'all think y'all gonna get a settlement. That ain't cool, all right? So let's be very clear. All right, I'm sitting outside. It's kind of cold out here now. Um, by the way, y'all can get my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. Y'all get my book um, at um, um, Amazon.com. You go to Amazon and get my book. Amazon.com, ladies and gentlemen, get my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. I see Wani in here. Shout out to my sister, Wani. Love Wani. Y'all shout out to Wani Sparks. Shout out to Wani Spots. Wani be giving them hell in these rooms. Now, who is Marie here? All right, let's see who Marie is. All right, Marie, you want to hop on, Marie? All right, Marie. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How Hi, are you, Marie? I'm doing good. So I kind of wanted to speak about this, um, you know, this racial, um, I'm not going to say confusion because there's nothing really to be confused about, but I do have uh, a mixed child and uh, she tells me, you know, about different little scenarios um, on school grounds and all, uh, also outside of school um, that, um, well, first of all, um, she's, uh, well, she's, she's really, she's light skin, but you know, you can tell she's, she's mixed. And um, a lot of people, when, when we go out, we, they, they look at us and I see how they look at her. So, you know, like, I understand um, what a lot of other people go through that have mixed children, and it's it's not cool, you know, like to to just be, you know, you don't you don't have to even talk to somebody to be racist. You don't even have to approach them. It's just the way sometimes people look at you. They can right, and and you're are you married? No. Okay, so are you with the 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 white man still? Um. I'm sorry. You said your baby's mixed. So yeah, what's your baby I'm, mixed I'm Mexican. My daughter, she's um, yeah, she's uh, African and Mexican. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, so, okay. I thought you were black. <laughs> no, well, I am. Um, there, um, it's a long story. So I am. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Whoa, hold on. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's let's back this truck okay, up. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I'm looking at your picture. You look black. Now, yes. what are you? Uh, well, my my great ancestors actually, I come from the Yanga tribe in um, Mexico. It was Africans that uh, used to be slaves. In Gaspar Mexico. Yanga, yes, yes, Gaspar Yanga. Yes, yes. so yes. my so my yes. yes. Okay, so you're black Mexican. Yes, yeah, you can say that. Okay. It's, it's been a while, you know. It's been a okay. Okay, y'all. St- okay, okay. You're black Mexican, sweetie. You're black Mexican, oh. and you know that. you're from. If you're from Yanga, that's a black black town. Yes. The- Yes. Okay, because Gaspar Yanga, the, the, the maroon rebel, yeah. he was a rider, and, and he, he got the Spanish up off them. I know who Gaspar Yeah, Yanga. and you know what's so funny? I my, my family, even though, you know, I was born in Mexico. My family, we still speak about us, the, the story about um about Yanga and how he actually killed his master. And, you know, they all ran away into different villages in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't know that there's a lot of... Um, African descendants in Mexico as well. I'm not going to say all Mexicans because there's some, obviously they are, you know, very okay. colorist, but. Okay. So you're okay. So, but you're, you're, okay. You a Latino, but you got <laughs> most, most, most Mexicans got black in them. Let's be very clear. So from that understanding, most, because there were a lot of black people in Mexico, people act like Mexico wasn't a slave colony. It was, it was one of the earliest slave colonies, a lot of slaves in Mexico from Africa. Okay. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the culture is African down there. So, so your guy is black. Your guy is he a black American? Yes. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so yeah, they look at your daughter funny. So yeah. Okay, it's, so it's the my, people who look at okay, okay, let's let's slow it down again. So the circles you run in, are you running in other Mexican circles? Um, I honestly, I'm in everything, you know, I hang out with anybody that's, you know, has positive vibes and a good mentality. Okay, honestly. Let's try it again, because black people, it's not black people looking at your daughter funny. We don't do that with kids. We don't trip on kids. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So this is just an, um, 
Okay, like last weekend, we went to the mall. When we were at the mall, my daughter, she has really, really puffy, big, fluffy hair. Right. Um, and I saw that a lot of people were just walking and, like, just staring at, you know, her fro. White people, and, white people right? Uh, I think a lot of people. All bunch of people. It wasn't just, black. Okay, let's be clear. Yeah, it wasn't, they weren't it black. wasn't black. <laughs> they weren't black, okay? Let's not play that game. It were so, white people doing that. So my, my daughter, she actually, she 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 brought it up. She's like, "Mom, I, everybody keeps looking at my hair," and I'm like, "You know what, baby? It's because they wish they had bigger, big hair like yours. They, okay. your, her hair is beautiful, you know." And What's I don't it? want her to think that something's wrong with her and the way she looks. So I always flip, and I'm, like, you know what, baby, you're beautiful the way you look, the way you are. I don't want her to feel like she needs to fix herself down or to change how she looks or her appearance to to please anybody around her so also like, hold on hold on because at that mall where there are other mexicans there looking at her strange too oh uh, uh, yeah absolutely a lot of there we go yes. that, that's where this is there we go that, that's where i want you to go with it there's a lot of anti-black racism within mexican culture yeah, I, I I I can see it. I can definitely agree with you. There's a lot of a lot of people that are very, um, they're not very well educated about you know different cultures. You no, know, it's not about education. No, they know they know exactly who we are. They know what we are. They, it's not like they're not educated. They have a contempt and jealousy, and they project a lot of their vitriol on us because they have a system that will engage in common law racism to elevate them it's a real deep thing but as far as your daughter i don't want to get too deep as far as that but as far as your daughter don't let your mexican side who have anti-black vitriol don't let that seep into the child don't let that no absolutely not um honestly um i had my daughter when i was 15 and um i had a really really um i guess rough relationship with my family after that because right, yeah yes because they didn't want you marrying no or having a baby with a black person that <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was difficult yes it was uh it was a pick and choose type of situation yeah. for, for a minute uh-huh metal la la rasa that whole improve the race <laughs> nonsense i know what that is they got it's all about improving the race you're supposed to marry light you marry somebody lighter than you that's sick nonsense i know about it ma'am i know but, about- you know, it, it, it goes deeper. It goes, honestly, it goes deeper. Um, my, my mom's side of the family, we come from Yanga, and my dad's side from the family were, um, it's very Spanish, very Spaniard Mexi- Mexicans, like very whitewashed Mexicans. So um, my mom um, didn't tell me actually that we were from Yanga until I turned 15 years old, basically. Yeah. I did not know we had any, you know, African ancestry until I was 15 because she, I guess she didn't want to tell us. It was very strange. Yeah, yeah, they got to hide that. They've been, they're very good at hiding that down there because all of them down in Mexico got black ancestry. All of them, all of them, all of them. And that's something that they like to hide now. So that's a real deep thing. But anyway.